Okay, for this short video today, um, we're going to look at STN Next and we're going to look at the CAS lexicon. Now, some of you who search on STN may be familiar with the CAS lexicon, but I'm going to show you how well this works in STN Next itself. So I'm already in the CA plus file. And if I wanted to do a very comprehensive search uh, for um, anti-cancer agents or anti-tumor agents, I might be doing a freedom to operate search or just generally be interested in research in that area. The temptation might be, of course, to use basic keywords and try and create a strategy um, around those. But with the CAS lexicon, what this does is if I type in, uh, here we go, anti-tumor agents, what I have now here is I can see my anti-tumor agents. There will be other synonyms and, and so on. But under the narrower terms, what I have here under the narrow terms is a very, very long, complex, detailed list of a number of different anti-tumor agents. Some of them might have been around for a long, long time and others not so much. So what is the value of this? Well, let's take a look at maybe... Uh, uh, one or two of these. Okay, let's pick on isotuximab. If I click on this, I can see other synonyms that this is also known as. So there's not very many. So presumably it's probably quite uh, new out there. Under the related terms, what I actually see as well now is any target or mode of action and also any disease that, uh, uh, that this particular uh, anti-tumor agent is used for. Now, the good thing with this is if I want to do a search for isotaximab, I can click on add all here at the at the synonyms. Don't do it here because it will also pick up things on the higher level. And actually, in fact, what is useful to see right now is I searched for anti-tumor agents, but I also see that this substance is indeed also classified as a pharmaceutical antibody and so forth. But let's take a search for, for this. So I click add all right here. And in fact, what I see now down on the uh, in the search box uh, is isotuximab. So if I submit that. Indeed, I only get 33 records where this substance is indexed. So it is fairly new. Now, if we take a look at a couple of these. So let's just take a look at the hit indexing. What I'm actually seeing is it's not the name that's highlighted. It is, in fact, indeed the CAS registry number that we can see highlighted. So when we do a search from the lexicon in STNX and it's a substance based, we are actually searching on the CAS registry number. And indeed, we also see that here as well. So I did include the synonyms, of course. But in fact, what this is actually doing is it's searching on that CAS registry number. Now, if we go back to the top again, to um, the anti-tumor agents, if we now do a search where we say, OK, let's search for anti-tumor agents and we add all of the narrower terms, what we are actually doing now is we are also including a search for all of these specific agents, regardless of maybe what the alternative or you know, synonyms are for, for these drugs as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive search. And of course, the value of this is if you do need to do a very detailed, comprehensive search as a part of your IP work or general research work, the fact that our indexers have added this into our lexicon, they have gone through the documentation, they have captured this control term for anti-tumor agents when they talk about such things, even if they use those words or not. And it means we have a very detailed uh, search straight away from a very basic use of the CAS lexicon. There's lots and lots of ways of using this CAS lexicon. I think it is awesome. I absolutely love it. And I suggest that if you are uh, interested in, in, in doing very detailed searches, then most definitely consider using this CAS lexicon in your searches. Thank you.